Matthew chapter 6. Just going to read a couple of familiar verses. Verse 31, the Bible says, Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Let's pray. Father, we bless your holy name. Lord, we're thankful to be able to be in the house of God this day. Lord, thank you for the good singing by the Harris girls and the gentlemen, those that sang. Lord, my heart was blessed by their singing. Thank you for the good testimonies. God, thank you for being a good God. For whatever reason, Lord, there's been opposition here this morning. So we pray that the sweet Holy Ghost of God would break through and bind the powers of hell, put a hedge about us, and help us this morning. We plead the blood of the Lord Jesus over this place. And God, we ask that you do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Lord, we are weak. We are a needy people. And God, we've come today seeking you and seeking help. And Lord, we know you're the one that Lord, uh, rend the river and Israel crossed over on dry ground. God, we know you're the one that shut the lion's mouth in the den where Daniel found himself. God, we know you were the fourth man in the fire in the furnace with the three Hebrews. Uh, God, we know that you can rend the heavens and come and take up your boat and do something tremendous in our sight today. So, Father, we pray for that one that's weak, that you would strengthen them. That one that is seeking, that they would find. Uh, that one who is struggling, you'd come and put your arms around them, help them down the road. Uh, God, that one that, uh, Lord, has a need, I pray that you'd uh, come and reveal the greatest need is what you have to offer them. Uh, Father, whatever uh, 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 somebody is facing here today, I pray that, Lord, uh, they'd come and lay it at the feet of Jesus. Uh, we pray especially if there's someone in this place this morning uh, lost without God uh, on their way to hell that you'd reveal unto them their lost condition. Uh, God, we'd see them birthed into the family of God. Uh, now, Father, we pray you'd use this unworthy vessel. Uh, Lord, help us this morning. Uh, God, I pray you do a work, and we'll thank you for it, for it's in the holy and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, we ask these things. Uh, amen. And amen. I want to draw your attention to something. It's a little unusual this morning, but I'm kind of an unusual fella. Uh, but there's some things that I want to look at this morning. Uh, and I mentioned that Jesus gave them biblical principles uh, that lead to God's blessings. Uh, notice the principle uh, that Jesus uses here to reveal some things unto them. Uh, can I say he reveals uh, uh, the longings of most? Uh, look again in verse number 31. He says, Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, uh, or what shall we drink, uh, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? Can I say it is a natural uh, 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 occurrence of the mind uh, to wonder uh, about taking care uh, of yourself. Uh, what am I going to eat? Uh, what am I going to drink? Uh, what am I going to be clothed with? Uh, he's talking about the primary root needs of individuals. Uh, can I say uh, uh, the world today is concerned uh, about uh, uh, all these things uh, and they're concerned about how they're going to pay their bills uh, and they're concerned about uh, the price of gasoline uh, and they're concerned about uh, 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 all manner of things going on in this world. Uh, and here uh, in Jesus' day they were in the same shape thinking about the same things uh, and here comes uh, uh, Jesus uh, and says uh, you should worry about them things. Can I say it's natural, uh, Miss Mary, to worry about uh, uh, your basic needs being met. Uh, but Jesus says, take no thought of those things. Uh, don't be consumed with those things. Uh, don't let that thought process uh, uh, control your life. Uh, he says, your heavenly Father, know that you have need of these things. Hmm? Mm, we don't think about that. Mm, brother, Phil, don't you think God knows how much gas is? Sure. Hmm? Yes, sir. 
Don't you think God knows who mashed potato brains sitting on the White House and the oh. White House? Do you think God yes. knows all that? Don't you think God knows uh, 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 how much your electric bill is going to be, uh, how much your Chick Fil A is going to be for uh, little Kaylee Grace over there? Don't you think God knows all that stuff? Uh, do you think God's in heaven, wringing his hands, worried about how he's going to take care of you, uh, uh, friend? He feeds the grasshoppers, uh, and he feeds the birds, uh, and he feeds the fish, uh, and he feeds the cows, uh, and he feeds all of them. Uh, and he didn't die for them, uh, but he bled and died for you and I. Uh, and he's concerned about you uh, and he's well able to take care of you today we see that he deals with the longings of most but he also reveals the looking of a few look what he says in verse 33 but seek ye first the kingdom of God he's talking about the looking of a few now when he's dealing with the kingdom of God, he's talking about when he comes to set up his millennial reign and he reigns from the throne of David for a thousand years in this world and he sets up his kingdom. He says what you need to be looking for is the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. My dear friends, you shouldn't be worried about your gas bill, but you ought to be worried and looking towards reigning with the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and who you're going to take with you. Uh, see, if you're looking for those things, you're not going to be in the sinning business. Mm. Can I say, 1 John chapter 3 lets us know that when He shall appear, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. He said, Whosoever hath this hope purifieth himself, even as He is pure. What he's saying is if you're looking for Jesus to come and you're looking for eternal things, uh, you're not going to be caught up in worldly things. But he said there's only a few looking for the kingdom of God. He says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. But then he not only deals with the longings of most and the looking of few, but he also deals with the living of even fewer. He says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Can I say, there are few who are really seeking to live a righteous life. When's the last time you asked God if there was anything in your life that didn't please Him. And then when He revealed it, you turned from it, repented of it, and forsook it. Right. Now I could say that there are only a few, and even fewer, few looking for heaven, even fewer, Brother Aaron, looking to live a righteous life. You know why? Because when I start preaching on things, some of you buck up. And you don't forsake it. All I got to do, brother, a, a little to kill the service is mention Facebook. Now listen, I understand there are some things from Facebook that are beneficial. I understand you can keep up with your family that maybe live off in a distance. Uh, I understand that uh, even through Facebook uh, uh, you can find preaching and you can find singing. Uh, I, I understand there are, there's good and bad in everything. But can I say, Miss Marcy, most people don't use Facebook to listen to preaching. Most of them use Facebook to get into gossiping and backbiting and meddling and lusting and envy and all those things that we shouldn't be involved in. And when I preach on Facebook, that's what I'm preaching on right there, that kind of life. And that's when I say your face ought to be in this book. This book will lead you to righteousness. Hmm? Huh? I get, to, I get to preaching on that. People get upset. But they don't turn off Facebook. But they turn me off while I'm preaching on it. Not interested in a righteous life. Can I help you something? One day you will. And it'd be too late. Mm. Fewer living a righteous life. Can I say food and raiment are but trinkets 
to the true believer who possesses a seek Christ first mentality. Those that seek Christ first, those that walk with Jesus, those that uh, uh, live by faith, uh, those that have uh, put into practice the biblical principles that Jesus laid forth, they're not interested in food or raiment. They know every time they go to cupboards, there's something there. Hmm. Uh, listen, I don't know about you, but I believe that that widow, after about the second or third time, she went and put that that uh, 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 a cup down into that meal barrel that was empty and come out and it was full. I believe after the third or fourth time, she just kept going back to that meal barrel and said, well, God hadn't failed me yet. He ain't going to fail me now. Well, she just kept dipping out meal. Uh, and she kept squeezing that cruise. Uh, and oil kept coming out of it. Uh, she'd empty her out. But the next time she needed it, there it was. Uh, what I'm trying to tell you, friend, uh, hey, uh, your meal barrel hadn't run dry and your cruise hadn't run out of oil. Uh, God's been faithful. Uh, he's taking care of you. When are you and I going to take care of the things of God? Uh, I want to preach with God's help this morning on spiritual priorities. On spiritual priorities. Now listen, spiritual priorities are anchored in biblical principles. When these principles are adhered to, they reap heavenly rewards. Hmm. Can I just say it this way? It doesn't take a rocket science figure, scientist to figure out who walks with God and who doesn't. Those that walk with God don't have their stakes dug too deep in this world. Those that walk with God are not easily deterred from the path. Those that walk with God, when troubles come, when trials come, and by the way, troubles will come and trials will come, heartaches will come, heartbreaks will come, but those that walk with God, regardless what befalls them, they'll be like Job and say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. They'll be like the psalmist. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul, all that is within in me bless the Lord uh, they've learned uh, that God is bigger than their problems uh, God is bigger than their circumstances uh, God is well able to take care of them uh, he didn't fail them before he won't fail them now uh, God is still God uh, but those that don't have a seek first Christ attitude it don't take big trouble brother Clint just a little speed bump on the road of life and their whole world goes awry. Mm. And uh, Brother Mike, what I can't understand, little trouble comes their way. They'll quit church, but they don't quit their job. Listen to me, don't quit your job, but I, I, I just want to make a point here. I'd quit my job before I quit God. Mm. Uh, I've only been at this thing 47 years, and can I say he's never failed me. Why in the world am I going to turn my back on him when little trouble comes? I'm going to run, jump in his lap when trouble comes, friend. Uh, so let me give you, and again, this is going to be a little different, but that's all right. Let me give you some things that will help you with spiritual priorities. Some things that if you put these biblical principles to practice, you'll reap heavenly rewards. Can I say this? First of all, grace leads to glory. If there's one thing you've got to learn something about, it's grace. Now, there's not enough adjectives in our vocabulary to really describe the grace of God. It is really uh, us not getting what we deserved. If we got what we deserved, we'd be in hell today. Uh, and as Christians said, God would be justified and thrown us off into hell for things we've said, uh, things we've thought, uh, things we've done, even since we got saved. Uh, uh, but grace tells me, I don't get what I deserve. Uh, I get what I need. Uh, one acronym for grace is God's riches uh, at Christ's expense. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ was the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Uh, hey, He went to Calvary. He bore your sin and my sin. Uh, he took the handwriting of ordinances against us uh, and nailed them out of His way, out of the, our way. Uh, uh, my dear friends, He shed His royal redeemed mean precious blood uh, uh, to redeem sinners. Uh, he made a way. Uh, Road Gentile dogs could be saved by the good grace of God. Uh, I'm not going to hell, not on my merit, uh, but on the merit of Jesus Christ. Uh, he's my Savior. Uh, he's my Lord. 
Lord. He's my friend. He's my shepherd. I bless his holy name. Can I say the grace of God? I was introduced to it when I got saved. But can I say it's more than just saving grace? There's living grace. There's sustaining grace. There's meeting all them food and raiment uh, supplying grace. Are you listening? Uh, he has grace uh, for everything you face. Uh, hey, I don't have to face it alone. Uh, I can face it walking with Him. Uh, but even when He doesn't make Himself known, uh, even when He's standing in the shadows, uh, I can rest on His grace. Uh, and He has a bountiful supply. Uh, every time He reaches in the barrel of grace and throws some out, uh, it just replenishes itself uh, you'll never exhaust the grace of almighty God uh, even when you cross over he's got dying grace but can I say this grace leads to glory you'll never understand the glory of God till you get a grasp on the grace of God when you start wallowing in the grace of God, uh, when you start appreciating God's grace, uh, when you start worshiping Him because of the grace of God, uh, you'll start seeing and experiencing a little glory in your soul. Uh, it won't be long and it'll work its way out your life. Uh, won't be long it'll set your affection on more glory. Uh, and one of these days we're going to bask in the glory of Almighty God. Uh, grace leads to glory. When you get the biblical principles of grace down in your life and you live by grace and you're thankful for by grace uh, and because of grace you, you submit and surrender your life to Jesus uh, and because of grace uh, uh, you work for Jesus and you serve Him uh, and because of grace uh, you'll come to the house of God and testify and worship uh, uh, because of the grace of God you'll tell somebody else about the goodness of Jesus. When you get grace down you'll start to understand a little bit about glory. Some of you still look at Phil like he's weird. Uh, he just he just wallowing in grace. That's all Phil does. He ain't got over that God saved him. Uh, he just comes to worship. Uh, you know how many people, Brother James, has run off because he hollers and screams in their ear back there? They come to sit in the back and then end up in the front. Say, what's wrong with that guy? He just tasted a grace, that's all. Uh, can I say grace leads to glory? But let me say something about grace. Grace must be seized. Uh, you can hear about grace, but it's another thing to experience grace. You need to seize it. If you're here today and you're lost, for by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. What you need to do is you've got to seize grace by putting your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, you need to be willing to repent of your sins and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You'll be saved and you'll start experiencing the grace of God. Uh, if you're saved, you need to seize God's grace. Every day you ought to get up and, and reach for some grace. Mm. Then grace must be shown. Uh, can I say something? When you waller in grace, you can't hide it. Every morning I put my dog out. And my dog does this to tick me off. He goes out in the dew of the grass and wallers all over it. Comes in, i got to get a towel and dry the thing off. He looks like a rag muffin. I said, what's he doing? He's wallering in the dew. Every morning, we and you need to get up and waller in God's grace. Uh, we need to get grace all over us. Uh, and when you get grace all over you, uh, others will see the grace of God on you. Huh? We're to be a light to this dark world. We, my dear friends, uh, are to shine in this dark world. How do we do that? You can't do it without having grace on you. Hmm? Uh, it amazes me how many Christians uh, say they're saved, say they're born again, say their name's written down in heaven. They walk around on their lower lip, talk about their problems like the world talks about their problems, uh, 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 complain and uh, everything like the world complains. No, mon no wonder your coworkers, your schoolmates, no wonder your family don't want to come to church with you. But if every time they started complaining, you'd say, but God's been good to me. Every time they start to uh, 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 whining and then say, but God's good. <laughs> you know what? Before long, they're going to say, I want a little bit of what they got. Uh, 
They might come out and get saved. Uh, uh, grace must be seized, it must be shown, but grace must be shared. God, for Christ's sake, has shown you grace. You, for Christ's sake, ought to show somebody else grace. Even if they don't deserve it. Because mm, you didn't deserve God's grace. Uh, you ought to treat others like Jesus has treated you. Grace leads to glory. Can I say this? Holiness leads to happiness. I've never seen a time in my life, Brother Bob, when so many uh, uh, saved people are so miserable. Hmm? Can I say, the Lord said, Be ye holy, for I am holy. He didn't say, If it feels good, be holy. He didn't say, If the stars aligned in a certain way, be holy. He didn't say, If everything was going good, be holy. He said, Be ye holy. He didn't say, Try to be holy. He said, Be ye holy. That means through the Holy Ghost and the Word of God, He has equipped us with what it takes to please Him. Now listen, I'm no fool. We still live in this flesh. We still have a fleshly nature. Every now and then you might step in a mud puddle. Well, don't leave your foot in the mud puddle. Get it out, get it cleaned off, and go on down the path. Are you listening? But you can live a holy life. A life that pleases God. A life that exemplifies the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you are living right... Just like that first song them girls sang. When you're missing out on everything the world's wrapped up in, that leads to happiness. Hmm? You say, Brother Doug, you'd have so much more pleasure in the world. Don't tell me. I'm fine right where I'm at. Oh, I'm like Phil Robertson. I'm happy, happy, happy. Oh, my sins are washed away. I got a home in glory. Uh, I get to come to this good church. Uh, I got the Word of God. Uh, I've got some of the best friends in the world. Uh, I'm happy, happy, happy. huh? And even Obama didn't take all the change out of my pocket. I'm telling you, I'm happy. Uh, listen, talk to Brother Jim, Miss Judy. they tell you they, they lived in a 4,000-something square foot house out there in Arizona. And they got the wild idea to buy one of them tiny homes. 410 square feet or something like that. You know what Miss Judy told me? She said all the things they had in that house was just stuff. And they got rid of all the stuff and all the clutter and just lived on the goodness of God. And they got happy. And they bought a boat. I was sailing the intercoastal uh, highway or waterway or whatever it's called. And he's happy. And then a farm became available in Barry, Kentucky. And they got real happy because they got to come back home. What a blessing. Well, I'm trying to tell you, you're going to clutter your life and just be happy in the Lord. God's starting to bless it and start moving. Uh, I mean, they got a place where he's got two shooting ranges. How good is God, man? One would be good enough for me. He's got two. Holiness leads to happiness. The reason you're not happy today is you're not very holy. You're full of envy. You think, if I had a bigger house, I'd be happy. No, you wouldn't. Because then you got, you, you, you got more to clean. You got more to fill up. If I just had a swimming pool, I'd be happy. No, you wouldn't. Because then you got to take care of the swimming pool. Uh, if I had a dog, I'd be happy. No, you wouldn't. Because then you got to take care of the dog. See, you're basing your happiness on things. Your happiness is uh, based truly on biblical principles and putting the Lord first. And when you learn to put Him first, you'll find happiness, I promise you. Huh? Holiness leads to happiness. Can I say this? Faith leads to freedom. So many of God's people are bound. You're bound by all kinds of things. Some are bound by debt. Some are bound by discouragement. Some are bound by de disease. Some are bound because they're defiled by sin. I'm, I'm talking about saved people. Uh, they're just people bound, bound, bound. That's why you didn't come ready to worship this morning. I had no idea my family was going to sing. We didn't even have the book in here. Uh, there's no way I could have preached then because somebody was all bound up. Hmm? 
You know what leads to liberty in Christ? Faith. Mm -mm. The just shall live by faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. He that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Without faith, you're not free. Uh, you're bound by something. Some of you are bound by doubt. Faith will overcome all that. And you'll have liberty in Christ. Liberty to worship. Liberty to walk. Liberty just to live. Faith leads to freedom. Can I say this? Resignation leads to revelation. You know why you can't see things in the Bible? You've never surrendered to God. When you resign yourself or surrender yourself or humble yourself before God and say, God, I need you. He'll show you all kinds of things from the Scriptures. Hmm? The Word of God become alive. It'll jump off the page. huh? Hey, it, He'll illuminate things to your mind. You'll see things you never saw before. Hey, He's alive and He's the living Word. But can I say the written Word's alive too because He's alive. That's why you can read something a hundred times and a hundred first time you see something you've never seen before because He's alive. And He'll reveal Himself to you through the Word of God when you resign yourself to Him. When you submit. See, Brother Josh, here's the problem. A lot of people know Jesus as Savior, but they don't know Him as Lord. When He becomes your Lord, oh, you'll see things from the Scriptures you never saw before. Huh? Can I say this? Prayer leads to power. There's some people that have power with God. Brother Mike, you know this. You've known people all your life. They had the power of God in their life. There are certain people you have confidence in you could call on, they could pray, and heaven would answer. There's been preachers we've known that's had the power of God. And then there's preachers that have good outlines, but they don't have any touch. Hmm? Can I help you with something? It's not no grave secret on how to, how to have the power of God in your life. It comes through prayer. The more time you spend talking with God, the more time you spend in that attitude and mindset of prayer, the more God gets on you. But see, the problem is, when I mention prayer, all you think about is that, now I lay me down to sleep prayer. All you think about is your prayer life. God, I need this, I need this, I need this, I need this, and I need it now. Did you not read mm, verse number 30? Uh, God's not some sugar daddy you bring your shopping list to and you expect him to fill it. You've got to understand what prayer is. True prayer is the union of the believer's thought with the will of God. When you spend so much time with God that your thoughts become His will, you'll have the power of God on your life. Can I say this? Prayer is not merely asking and receiving. It is conforming and completion. When you start conforming to the Word and will of God and He completes His will in your life, you'll have the power of God on your life. Uh, you know whether the Apostle Paul on the way to the chopping block to have his head chopped off could say, I fought a good fight, I kept the faith, I finished my course. You know why he could say all that? Because he had the power of God in his life. You know why so many people quit church when they have a little problem in their life? Because they don't have the power of God in their life. Can I say prayer leads to power? I'm almost done. Can I say the Scriptures lead to serenity? You know what will cause you to have peace in the most troublesome of times? Having the Word of God hid in your heart. Spending time in the Scriptures, having you a promise that you got from the Word of God that you can anchor your life to. That will bring peace in the midst of your storm. Can I say this? This is real popular in the Baptist church. Giving leads to gain. Number one, you can't outgive God. Number two, it is a biblical principle that you bring your tithes and offerings to the storehouse first. Hmm? And can I say this? That any time you give something for God's glory, you gain. Now, He don't always give it. You know, I've never had a Brinks truck back up to my driveway and dump off a load, although I'm a, I'm a, I'm a candidate for that. If God wants to do that, hallelujah, I can spend it. But can I say... The more that I've given of my money, of my time, of, of my abilities, of my 
ear to listen, of just being there for folks, of praying. The more I give, the more I gain. The more that I have the peace of God, the presence of God, the hope from God, the help from God, I gain. You show me somebody stingy, I'll show you somebody, first of all, out of the will of God, but I'll also show you somebody miserable. But you show me somebody that's a giving person, I'll show you somebody that has a loving spirit. I was talking in my Sunday school class about my first Sunday school teacher, Miss Lucy Moorfield. Miss Lucy Moorfield was a widow woman. She didn't have anything. I remember my grandpa used to get me up before the sun would come up. That's why I don't like getting up early today. He'd get me up before the sun come up. Now, my granddaddy was the pastor. He was the preacher. He'd call me. He said, in the morning, I want you here before the sun comes up. So I had to be at his house. My grandpa always had a big Buick. Now, he'd had a massive heart attack in the early 60s. Back then, they took your driver's license from you if you had a massive heart attack. And so, but, he, but he always had a big Buick, big Electra, 225, you know, a big one. I mean, it looked like a battleship going down the road. And we'd, we'd, we'd get there, and he'd have me drive him to Miss Lucy's house. We'd get up there and help put out a garden. And she'd have about a half-acre garden, just her. And we'd be snapping beans, or we would be, you know, picking this, or we'd be, you know, digging up potatoes. We'd do, and I hated every minute of it. Uh, them two old people snapping twice the beans I was. I couldn't keep up with them. But he would always do something, and the church would do something, just be good to Miss Lucy. Didn't have anything. She'd come to church. Preacher would say, anybody got anything on your heart? Kind of like I did. She'd just stand up in her pew, start singing, no one ever cared for me like Jesus. God would flood that place. You say, what do you, what do you say? Uh, she didn't have a whole lot of this world, but she had a whole lot of God. And I learned, the more you give, you say, why did she have such a big garden? Because she'd take it and give to people she thought was less fortunate than her. Hmm? I'm just trying to help you. The way to gain is give. It's kind of like the way to, to climb God's ladder is by down. The lower you get, the bigger God gets, the higher He propels you. Uh, John the Baptist said it this way, I must decrease, He must increase. Are you listening? The way to gain is through giving. I'll say this lastly. Hardship leads to honor. <laughs> You see, your troubles and your trials are developing in your character and your testimony. God allows those hard things to come into our lives, not because He don't care about us, but so that He can develop us that others can see the grace and glory of God in our life even in the hard times. Now, back before we had digital cameras... You take photographs, they would take that film out of the camera, and they'd develop those pictures in a place called the dark room. Some of the most beautiful things come out of the darkness. And can I say, some of the most beautiful things that have come out of your life is developed in the dark times. Hardships leads to honor. Listen. There's people who aspire to be a great songwriter. There's people who aspire to be able to get up and sing and have the power of God on them when they sing. There's young men that aspire to be the preacher and, and get all the notoriety the preacher gets. But what a lot of people don't see is behind the great lyrics to the song was a heartbreak. What a lot of people don't see is the singer getting up singing with the touch of God on them is because uh, they've learned that song through heartbreak. Can I say, some of the greatest men of God that have ever stood had the power of God on them because God brought them through dark times. Honor comes through the hardships. You may be going through a hard place right now. Hey, just, just hang out there and wait for Jesus to show up because He's developing you. And through that, maybe somebody's going to come to God. Through that, maybe the power of God will fall on your soul and you may be 
one of the greatest soul winners this generation's ever seen. We don't know what God's doing. Just let him do it. And friend, when it all said and done, he'll be glorified and you'll be glad. I'm reminded the Apostle Paul said in Romans chapter 8 that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. Now we tie that to heaven. But that also means right now. So my dear friends, how's your priorities? <coughs> Why are you here this morning? Is that an obligation? When was the last time you sought Christ first? Hmm? When was the last time trouble came, you got on your knees and said, Okay, Lord, what are you trying to show me? When was the last time you gave not to gain, but you gave anyway? When was the last time it was all about Jesus and not Jesus and me? Or me and Jesus? That was your priority today. If we take inventory, we tend to think of ourselves a little better than we ought to. But when's the last time you asked God to show you what your priorities are? How much time do you spend with Him? And how much time do you spend in this world? My dear friends, when Jesus becomes the priority, business will pick up in our lives, in our homes, in our churches, and in our communities. But it all starts with a decision. Take no thought what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, what you're going to put on your body. Your Father knows you have need of those things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. When has that become the aim of your life? If it wasn't this morning, it can be for the rest of the day. Let's all stand, Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. While they're picking out a song, some are already coming. The altar's open. If you're here today and you're not saved, we invite you to come. We'll take a Bible, show you what the Bible says about being saved. You can be saved today. If you're saved, you ought to ask God to show you what your priorities look like. As folks are praying, they're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the scriptures. Thank you for your good presence and the good grace of God. Now, Father, help people this morning. Help them to see the importance of what you said in the scriptures about seeking first the kingdom of God and your righteousness. And then, God, help us to put it into practice in our lives. God, help folks to do business with God now. And certainly, if there's somebody here unsaved, I pray they'd come and give their heart and life to Jesus. Have your will and way, and we'll bless you for it. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Turn away. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.